So we're gonna talk a little bit about integrating Terraform with our on-premise bare metal provisioning. And it's a little bit different than the context you might be hearing in a lot of other places with the cloud provisioning. And so we hope that you hear some maybe intriguing aspects of this, something that you find interesting, something that makes you question. So feel free to ask questions either afterwards or find us later. Uh, anything you wanna know, we'd love to talk about it. So feel free to do that. So, I'm gonna start off, we've heard a lot in this conference about great things going on with infrastructure automation and dynamic infrastructure and providing business value quickly and Terraform integrating in with EC2, cloud, various different things. And just to let you know, this is not that story. Um, this is in fact a bit of a horror story, but I want to be clear, we're rewriting this story right now and we do believe it's gonna have a happy ending. So we're we're optimistic about this. So, <laughs> this is not a pretty picture, right? This is, unfortunately, this is where our company was. Um, we were very much stuck in this world of, of very difficult to get infrastructure and, and to deliver business value and to innovate, you had to go through a lot of pain. And, and for an example, in this particular situation, I would have to go ask for a server, and maybe in two weeks, maybe in two months, I'd get that server, but I couldn't use it yet. It had to go to the OS team, and they had to provision it with the, or they had to install the OS, and they had to configure it, and they had to harden it, and all those things. And then it went to another team, the web hosting team, and they installed Apache and configured and hardened it. And then I finally got my infrastructure, and still a problem because my infrastructure could not actually talk to the rest of my application hardware because the networking team didn't get the right details and the two subnets could not communicate, right? So that, that's really a painful way to live. And I'd like to say this is an exaggeration, but this is in fact a very true story that happened in the midst of a performance escalation. And in that two week period that it took to even figure out that we had no ability to put this in to solve our performance problem, we solved our escalation other ways. But you can see this is a really, really bad place to be in, right? So we were stuck in siloed IT where managing our infrastructure was too complex. It was full of handoffs and blockers and configuration errors. And basically, it was static, expensive, all the kind of things you don't want to have in your infrastructure. But things did get better, right? So we moved to virtual machines, and then we all had to move and refactor and make sure our applications would work on virtual machines. And we had a lot more flexibility, and we could get servers a lot faster, but really getting server in three months is a very low bar to get over, so that wasn't really saying all that much. But we still had a lot of the same problems that we had. We still had a lot of configuration errors. We still had a lot of problems with our managing our infrastructure where our VM host would be overloaded here and not enough going on here. We weren't doing a great job of managing our infrastructure. So, and, and we have a constraint here that's a little bit different than a lot of the conversations I've heard this week in that we're a hardware company. At our core, that's what we do. We do not, for the, well, we just don't go spin up computers or machines that we need in the cloud. We do everything with our hardware in our data centers on-prem. And so that luxury of saying, you can't get it to me quickly, we don't have it. We gotta figure out how to do it on-prem, how to develop it that way. So that is, Big, big constraint for us and definitely produces sad faces. So, so time goes on and we started hearing some teams talk about this thing called composable infrastructure. And so co composable infrastructure is this concept that all of your infrastructure can be treated as a pool. You have a pool of server resources and you have a pool of storage, you have a pool of networking and what you need you come in and provision, you take the pieces, you put it together for the infrastructure you need, and then when you're through or your business need changes, you go ahead and give it back and pull the resources back out. So this is great, right? If we could use that, we could match our infrastructure needs to our demand, we could deliver quickly. If we could simplify how we deliver our IT infrastructure instead of the horror story that has been the managing siloed IT, Look at what we could do. We could make it as easy, our on-prem infrastructure delivery, as easy as the cloud. It's a great idea, right? So how do we get composable infrastructure? So 
Clearly, that's a setup question, right? So it just so happens at HPE, we have a product called HPE OneView, which does exactly that. It provides composable infrastructure, convenient. Um, the key thing I want to talk about, a couple of points that are important to our infrastructure automation story about this. One, it does provide. It manages the resources in a way that we can just ask for resources and completely use that as composable infrastructure. So it takes care of that. The second thing that this, this appliance provides for us is the unified REST APIs. So everything you do with managing these resources, you can do through APIs. And that's fantastic for us, right? Because what we want is to automate our infrastructure. We don't want to do manual things. We want to do it that way. So now we have a tool that gives us the composable infrastructure. And we have APIs to use to automate. So our next question is, hmm, what could integrate with these APIs to give us the infrastructure as code and the automation for our on-prem IT? And Clearly, we're here. You can see what we chose. It's easy, right? It's Terraform. Terraform has some great aspects that make it perfect for this. And so out of this, we're filling this gap for the ability to do our on-prem bare, bare metal provisioning with a Terraform OneView provider. So this is fantastic. So this is probably going to cover something you've maybe all already know. Um, or you've heard before, or maybe it's new, I'm guessing you probably know that, but Terraform provides some very specific things that were essential, as it does to anything that is using it as a provider, but were really essential for our ability to do it, to integrate it with our OneView tool. So first off, it really abstracts the complexity away, and when you're managing the resources, like in the cloud, at the API level, you don't want the user to have to deal with it. You want to give them that easy interface. And we'll go through in a few minutes and show an example of kind of what that looks like. So dependency management, that's another key aspect. If we had had to write the logic to determine if you have a Terraform file and you have one resource that's dependent on another, if we had had to write the logic before we called the APIs to determine, make sure those are instantiated in the right order, destroyed in the right order, that pretty much would have been a blocker for this. We would not have been able to make the progress, do the things we needed to so quickly with this. And so that, that was a key thing we get for free with Terraform too. And uh, another big one is the parallel resource management. So we're talking about composable infrastructure. We're talking about the ability to bring it up, destroy it quickly. If you can't do it quickly, if you can't get it as much in parallel as possible, we already saw that picture. You know what happens when you sit there and wait forever for IT. So that was a key aspect for us out of that. And then finally, so we're talking about the API-driven interaction, but our tool actually has a UI. Users can go onto the tool. They can mess around with your infrastructure. And it was kind of fun to be able to know that you could fix that immediately. You could go right in, run your Terraform apply, and you would be back to the right infrastructure because although I'm sure users never intend to do that, we definitely see problems when that happens. So, Okay, so now you see it. Our story is not quite as sad after all. We have a tool that creates the fluid pool of resources. And we have API-driven automation for our, for our on-prem infrastructure. And with Terraform, we have a tool that manages the infrastructure just the way we want it to do, and then adds bare metal provisioning into our on-prem solution. So just like my two personal favorites, Captain Kirk and Spock, uh, the two better together. HP OneView and uh, Terraform are better together. So let's take a little closer look so this is just a UI, a screenshot from the OneView UI. We're going to look at some of the resources, in particular, the server profile resource. So if you take a look here, you can see this is the resource. This is basically the Terraform file you need to generate to create a, a server in our tool. Not too many lines, close to 10, a little bit less, right? And so not a whole lot that you have to provide to get up and running. And we're going to take a little look at the three areas, the server profile, the connections, and the boot order in a little more detail. So when out of this particular here, you see there's just a few lines on the left-hand side. 
When you hit the API for the server profile, this is the information you're going to get back for that. So while there's very little you actually have to configure here, there's a lot more that is created, a lot more that is taken care of for you. Again, this is what Terraform providers bring for everybody, right? You get to hide this complexity, and, and that's very useful for your users. Looking at the second one, you see it even more. What is three lines here for connections really explodes to a number more lines. You don't have to worry about it. You only get to deal with what you want to. And in the final one, if you look at this in the boot order, so the single line in Terraform gets you all this additional information. And this really gets at the heart of the Terraform integration in terms of our users being able to quickly manage the infrastructure that they want. So anytime you make your infrastructure management easier and still allow your users to define exactly what they want without having to know all the gory details, unless they want to, then you've really got a big win there um, in my book. So hopefully you can see that we're well on our way to writing our own happy, happy-ish middle. We're not at the ending, but we're certainly on a much better path. We're at, at a much better place, and I'm going to now turn it over to Matthew for the fun show and tell part. All right. Thanks, Diane. So my portion of the talk will be about the internals for the OneView provider. A uh, quick demo for, for actually getting the provider up and running, and then uh, what we're doing internally with the provider. So. What it, uh, Clint's talk, uh, just this past breakout session, really went into detail for how to create a provider. And so this will kind of be a rehash. But for any provider, you're going to have um, a set of, of base, uh, base code that you need where you have an API. Um, and then hopefully you have that wrapped in the SDK. And so the reason that um, you want to get things wrapped in the API is because you don't want to go through the UI all the time. If you go through the UI, um, it's, it's not. It's simple, but it's not efficient. If you want to start automating things, then you cannot hit that with the UI. And so you go through the APIs, but as Diane showed, when you use the API, they can get pretty hairy. And so you wrap that all up in the SDK, and then that's, that uh, portion of the, of the API really gets handled for you. And so to get our provider up and running, um, a team within HPE had already created a OneView going SDK. They wanted to get Docker integrated with, with OneView, and so that's why they created that SDK. And so that was a great jumping off point for us to get that uh, provider up and running, where we use that and the other 40 plus providers out there. Clint's talk last time would have been super helpful um, for getting it up and running, so I'm kind of bummed that we didn't get to use that. but. Um, so to, to hit anything with, with Terraform and OneView, you're going to go through the OneView provider, and that's talking to the SDK, and then that's going to hit the OneView API, which in turn talks to your actual hardware. Um, and so with that, that's, that's kind of just all the information that you need to get spun or to understand um, what's going on. I just need to flip the projector around. I think this will do it. So I'm going to go ahead and switch gears and talk about the demo, hopefully. I think I lost it, guys. There's that. <coughs> so if I run and duplicate. Uh, that's fine. We can get it to work like this. It'll just be a little awkward. OK, so we'll grab this and shove it this way. OK, cool. And so what we're going to do is kick the demo off first, just because it takes a couple minutes. And so I'd rather get the demo going and then kind of explain what's going on. So what we have here is the OneView API, or the OneView UI. And so we're just going to show a little piece of it. Um, and so this is just the server hardware aspect of it, where um, in, in your rack, you have um, certain blades, uh, or you have an enclosure in that you have blades. And so here we're saying that we have two blades available. Um, we just already grabbed them because it took me a little time to get stuff situated. And so normally, that when you first get started, um, these blades will be empty. Um, and so 
what we did was kicked off the demo and that grabbed those blades, but the code actually looks like. And sorry guys, this is very hard to see. Okay. So yeah, so this is our actual Terraform file for getting into OneView. And so our, we have three resource blocks. The first block is gonna be the provider um, one view block. And so in here you specify things like username, password, endpoint, I hid that stuff so you guys can't get onto my one view instance because that'd be horrible. Um, and then we have another block for the server profile template. And so a template is just, it's, it's exactly how it sounds where it's gonna be kind of our base um, server profile that where everything that a server needs, it's gonna reference that. So you can specify things like the network, connections, um, storage, boot order, stuff like that. And Diane already kind of hinted on that. But we're just gonna specify the minimum that we need. Um, so the name, the enclosure group, which is where our actual hardware is, and then what hardware we're allowed to run our server on. Um, and below that, we're gonna go ahead and run the, the server profile. And in this, we, we all we have to do is specify the server template that we're using. And so the demo should be done. Um, and so yeah, we did get a, a successful run down here that it looks good to go. And then also if we look on here, um, we can see that we did we did put Matthew test one and Matthew test zero onto these blades. And so what I also like to do is simulate adding new blades into our rack because this is bare metal, this is on premise. And so what we should be able to do is be able to slot in new blades. And so I have a really nifty way to do that, which is gonna be by instead of actually buying blades and slotting them in, I can just change some search parameters and, and say that I already had those blades available. And so what we can see here is that we've added two more blades. Um, normally you'd have to buy these, but like I said, I just messed with some search parameters. Um, and then I can go into my Terraform file, go ahead and change this count. Um, oh, this is hard to see. I would love to, um, but it's just so hard to move the mouse. Windows did not do a very good job of, of adding zoom into their stuff. Okay, so yeah, so we bumped the count from two to four, pretty standard. Um, if I could see my the end of it, um, I should be able to get out of it. Okay, and then we can run Terraform, just clear it and then also zoom in on it and run Terraform plan. So we already saw this and we can't really see anything. And I can't type today either. So we're on Terraform plan and so it's just gonna check to make sure our first three resources are good and then we'll see that we also have two more that we need created. And so I'm not gonna run through that because we already saw it, but what we'll do is run Terraform destroy. Uh, Destroy. And what we're doing here is we're actually releasing those blades back into the pool, and those can be picked up by another application. Um, and it's super simple and easy way to do that. And so what we can see here is that just in a second, um, we'll, be, we'll be releasing those blades. Those blades will say, uh, remove the low and process or something like that. And so I can't actually get onto these machines. There's no operating system on them yet. Um, but yeah, as you can see, remove um, profile. And so I can finally be done with that. That was horrible. That was very difficult. Um, so I can go back here. All right, but yeah, so like I said, those don't have operating systems. We can't SSH onto them, but we do have a way to do that through Terraform. And so we have this another tool called ICSP. Um, and that's gonna be our way of getting operating systems onto these machines. And so you would, um, 
you give it uh, like ILO IP um, username and password, and that's going to be what's managing our server. Um, and so it's not really important. It's just going to be how we actually get onto the server since there's nothing on it. Um, and then we're going to run Ubuntu 14.04. And so this is just a super simple um, Terraform resource. Uh, it takes a little bit longer than we have time for, so we're not going to actually run it. But that's how you would get an operating system on there. Um, and so, yeah, I'd like to switch gears and talk about what we're doing internally with this provider. Um, so we've been working really closely with that team that created the OneView SDK. And so uh, they have known that we're making a Terraform provider for OneView. And they were like, oh, and we explained to them all the benefits that, that we've already heard about all today. And so they were really excited, like, oh, we have this super awesome idea. And so one of my coworkers coined that idea as CASAS. And so if you haven't heard about CASAS, it's not compute as a service from, from Clint's talk, but it's actually container as a service as a service. And so what, <laughs> so, uh, what that really allows uh, us to do is uh, organizations within HPE, they would request one of these services, and it's um, UCP uh, environments. So that's the Docker's container as a service um, platform. And so um, they would request one of those, and we would actually build those environments and give them to them. We'd, they would, they'd have all their own infrastructure. They'd have um, everything set up. And so to do that, we use a variety of tools. We've got um, OneView, obviously, for the infrastructure, uh, Terraform to provision that infrastructure. Um, We've got Ansible to go ahead and get those environments configured and set up properly. Uh, and then Vault as well to do the secrets for each individual environment. And so the way it works is that, so a team within HP would request one of these environments or they would make, uh, oh, and then, uh, sorry. They would get one of these GitHub environment or GitHub repositories that would hold default information about their environment. And that could be a Terraform file saying how many um, nodes they had or like worker node versus master node. And in that repository, they could have like a Docker config file that would say how they want their, their environment set up. And so it's just simple stuff like that. Um, but when that got created, um, it would kick off a job that would hit our UCP control cluster. And in that, we'd either grab secrets or create secrets for that environment and pass those into a Dockerized Terraform container. And that would um, also grab the configuration from the GitHub repos um, and run Terraform plan and apply and go ahead and create that infrastructure on OneView, in OneView. And then once that was created, we'd run um, Ansible scripts or Ansible playbooks to get that UCP environment configured. And so this is a really high level overview of what we did, um, but it's, it's just showing you that we're actually already using this provider in-house and it's, it's been great. So um, I'd just like to talk about where we are now. We have two reposit open source repositories for this stuff. The first is the OneView Golang SDK, um, and then the second is our Terraform provider OneView. We just got approval to have this stuff open source, so we don't have all the things that we need in it right now, but there's like five or six resources that you can create out of the, the 10 or 12 that we have done. Um, so within the next week or so, that stuff will be out there. The things that we can create in-house, not open source yet, are things like servers, storage, and networking. Um, we've already kind of hit on the Ethernet server and server profile templates, but you can do a whole lot more with it, um, and then more, more to come as well. Uh, we definitely want to start adding in um, more resources into, into this provider. Um, we're doing this all the time. And then also, uh, OneView went ahead and got up, updated from version API version 2 to 3. And so we want, definitely want to get that stuff in there. And then I hit on this um, ICSP, which is how you're getting operating systems onto, onto these servers. And um, it's like I said, it's it's pretty slow, but HP is releasing a new thing called the Image Streamer, and we definitely want to get that integrated into Terraform as well. And so, with that, I think that's going to go ahead and conclude our talk. So, thank you for your time.